Nope. Okay, go ahead. About that. Oh, he's still trying. Oh. Okay. Behind your elbow or something. Okay. Something. So about, why are there no top, loose rocks here? What about here? top just right of center? Okay. Are you talking about that? Yeah. Adam, why are there no loose rocks here? Uh, not not joking, like actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they've been uh, sitting for long enough that the iron manganese crust has kind of glued them all together. So they've been sitting for a million years. Millions. Millions of years. Yeah. Undisturbed. Oh, yeah, that one's loose. Flat, though. It's all right. We'll take it. All right. We can double up on the next one if we... Feel the urge. I guess it didn't fall out of the sky, so this is its home. It's not a long way to travel. Coral cutter, not so good at rock picking. Sample zero six zero. We got it. All right. Where do you want this to go? Open small box on the starboard side. You got one? Okay. Yep. Okay, which one's that? Which which one's open? Go wide, please. All of them. Are open. All of them. Okay, yeah. dealer's choice. Oh, really? Wow. Sample salvo. <laughs> Just a really big sponge there. <laughs> I mean, okay, I'll give you mine. I know I can get it in there, but I, yeah, there. That Sorry. Helps just a little bit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm used to being like, oh, God, there's like 16 floaty things in the inner boxes. Let's go for the back one. All right, it's going in Delta. Trying. Yep. Good. Sorry, Steve, I was trying to get a better view of those. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go for it. Did that? Nope, still a bit. Same spot. <laughs> All right. Did that go We're gonna delta or F? Okay. D. Okay. Did you D want water? Dark. Yeah. Water. Do water. Okay, dive salvo. Niskis. Roger. Niski camera. Yes. All right, uh, what do we got open for Niskins? Uh, we have five, three, two, or one. Does it really matter? As long as it's five, three, two, or one. <laughs> <laughs> I have to actually go for a little grab here. <laughs> Should be five. Oh, yeah, there. Got it. Already. Up. Got it. Five. Okay. Phew. Is that the scoop? Scoop mark three. Not a lot of. This is not scooping territory, that's for sure. All right. Yeah. It doesn't have teeth or eyes or something. So the plan is we're going to kind of head in, head in the direction of the next uh, waypoint over on the other seamount. 
Are we going to um, skip waypoint six then? Or I guess that the summit is waypoint yeah, we, six. Yeah, we, we, I think we poked around enough up here. Okay. Going to start our yeah, movement. Can decide how. Well, you you did want a coral though, right? Didn't you want one of the corals? Yeah, I um, I'll wait till the other okay. get to the other peak, catch up some time here. I, th I think we'll have similar species over there at similar depths. The depth of the waypoint seven is similar to where we are now, correct? Yeah, it is uh, within twelve meters. All right. So we're going to tow or travel quickly, whichever is the fastest mechanism to get us to the other side. Yeah, so right now we have 10 meter contours on and we're over here. So it's hard to see with all of our USBL madness, but we're over here on the summit and we need to come over here to waypoint seven. And that is from where we are right now, about 4.1 kilometers. And it's gonna be the same depth, so within 12 meters. Um, so we can tow over there. Um, I'm not sure how fast we'll, pro we'll be able to go, maybe one and a half, one knot. Um, uh, I'd be even surprised if we got that, maybe. Yeah. Yep. I think you should drive. Yep. No, I think you kind of, we'll just kind of stay high. You'll jump off the edge of this guy and then maybe we might be able to acquire like somewhere here. And, but I, I would say, yeah, I'd say fly it, just kind of stay ahead. Even if we're out on the blue, like it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Okay. We, we can keep up to a knot, no problem. I doubt we might get a knot, maybe, at this depth that the 2600 is going to be pretty. Okay. You could ask for a knot and see what happens. <laughs> okay. We sure have an NA134 on the infamous day. Um, so help me out here, guys. Is it just put in a 1,000-meter move at one knot? towards where we need to go or is there kind of a better way to go about this they've been doing tracking lines do they like that or do they rather steps um i can see if they want to track a line um paul might not know what i'm talking about but there could be someone else on the bridge <laughs> okay I can... it's up to you i mean it's either you ask for the yeah. steps or okay roger That's what do we cool. have bridge nav Um, we're looking to track a line at bearing, sorry, let me just double check my bearing, uh, 250 for about four kilometers at one knot. Is that something, is that a move you can put in? Yep, we're moving over to another part of the ridge. It's four kilometers away, and I want to track a line at one knot bearing 250. Um, that bearing was 250. Sort of want to come all the way around to starboard. Two five zero. Okay. Can you hold off on his move? Um, you want to hold off? Oh, okay. uh, so the you said you were going to do a turn. It's oh. going to take. Okay, great, go for it. Whatever, it's going to take a while. Sorry for the confusion, everyone. Do the move. Do the Thank turn. Thank you. So, are you at? Where are you at? You're at. Uh, you're almost there. I'm going to. Yeah. I'm going to come around this way. Yeah, that sounds great. Keep an eye on the tether. I might come up just a bit. All right, so that move is in. Um, you just made one large move at four kilometers, so okay. I'll keep an eye on it. Speed is one knot. Great.
So Steve, we're yes. moving to another part of the seamount. Do you want to explain kind of why we're doing that and what we're looking for in this different part of the seamount before we start making our move? Yeah, we uh, we came up a ridge uh, on the northeast side of the seamount this morning. Um, it turns out that this there's a there's a rather deep uh, several hundred meter saddle uh, between the peak of this uh, small ridge and the main seamount uh, part main part of seamount F. So our plan, rather than to s maintain contact with the bottom uh, and go more slowly down slope where the visibility is poor, um, we're going to try and pick the vehicles up off the seafloor a little bit traverse through the water column, basically driving through at around a knot, and then um, drop back down on our next waypoint, which is approximately at the same depth on the primary seamount. Great. And then we'll just keep moving up. We'll just keep moving up. It. Yeah, there's there's two peaks again on this seamount, similar to the, some of the last ones. So we'll see what we can accomplish over the next couple hours. I suspect... Uh, probably be in the blue water not not recovering stay with us folks <laughs> just moving just moving <laughs> mm. is it pretty common then across most of these deep sea mounts in the pacific to have this saddle or just these few that we've been looking at and what kind of causes that saddle feature? Do you know? Yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly. I imagine it's probably some sort of, yeah, how the mantle plume affects this part of the crust it might result in different, you know, areas where you have uh, magma come out of the seafloor. Um, sometimes, not not in this case, but sometimes you know these larger. Um, Ridges and things, if they're disconnected, can sometimes be the result of, of failures in the side of the seamount, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. Um, you know, for example, if, if a, a side of the seamount was to fall out. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we dove a very similar ridge uh, at Tamana Seamount, uh, which is a guillot and the monument just to the west of here uh, during our previous cruise, and it turned out that. That ridge, which was actually off the south east corner, um, was more, arguably more diverse than the the primary part of the geo itself. Um, had massive, massive hemicorellium gardens huh. and uh, very high density black corals. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So th this one, I would say, it's impressive. Go for zoom. But it's a little bit different than what we saw previously. Sea star, maybe feeding. Kind of a bulbous yeah. sea star. Distended. Yeah. Okay, go wide. Looks like we're getting up to speed here. All right. At least on the ship. And water transect. Here we go. This is us still useful data. Somebody may use this um, if we fly, fly steady enough and slowly enough. Um, sometimes you can see the gelatinous zooplankton that go by. So it is data of some type. It's not benthic data, but it's uh, pelagic data. And any gelatinous organisms we see could be really useful observations to scientists ashore who study life in the midwater. So we still got to keep our eyes peeled. Yeah. Or we can. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah.
Sorry. No, it's fine. I just think when you go downhill, flying straight, you just keep an eye on your altitude because the DVL is the closest thing to the ground. And uh, you don't want to hit that, obviously. Um, and then you just kind of stay a wee bit ahead. And then as long as my like my altitude is lower than my delta, so i got to kind of keep an eye on that. I don't want to get too low. It's, uh, I think it'll be fine. I just think, you know, you just keep a reasonable height off bottom. I don't think you're... The goal is not to get all the pretty pictures right now. It's just to get from A to B. So just capture what we can. And like Steve said, you, you're covering a lot of ground and you just get to see a lot of stuff, but you're maybe not doing all the zooms and whatnot. Are you gonna are you gonna try and keep contact with the bottom for yeah, as long as I you think can? Yeah, I think it probably looks something similar to this. And if it just falls right away, then uh, obviously we'll just kind of keep flying out and then sure. Um, as, yeah. Then obviously, as our like Argus is uphill of Herc, so I have to watch my altitude a little more and not so much the delta. So we might be a little tighter on the. Tether, but uh, we keep it uh, where they want to break 12 or so. Yeah, I think, you know, your altitude, as long as you kind of keep that meter and a half or so, two meters. So right now the vehicles are only going 0.3. I guess that'll take a while to get them up to speed. Oh yeah, it'll take a bit. Do we have enough to do a, D a Doppler reset here? I, I think we're going to lose it immediately. I don't know what I'm thinking, but... At least while we have contact with the bottom, the DVL will have a, uh, like, because it's nice and close to the bottom. Okay. It's not a big deal. I'm not really using it. It's just. And then one other thing you sort of want to keep an eye on, it has to be pretty extreme, but since we are transiting backwards at a knot, you want to watch wire cam. Just okay. keep an eye on the 6-8 relative okay. to the, the stern of the ship. Sounds good. Okay, don't worry about it. I'll just sort of make up my own nav. Yeah. yeah. Help me actually, yeah, help me make up my own nav, really. As long as Argus is on the heading you're going and you're in the middle of the screen, then you're in the right spot. Yep, totally. <laughs> Doesn't really matter what the, yeah, yeah. What the acoustics tell you. Or don't tell you. It was kind of silly how long it took us to get a rock. Like, that was a long time. That was a tough spot. Yeah. But we got one. Yeah, nothing has moved up there in millions of years. That's the thing I'm kind of stuck on. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, that's why they're, <laughs> that's why Until they're five not minutes coming ago. up. <laughs> Until five minutes ago, right. <laughs> Reset the clocks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here comes the humans. <laughs> Every time. I think there's quite a large bamboo below us right now. Yeah, there's, oh, yeah, there was yeah. pretty good diversity here. Definitely different than earlier this morning. Felt like there were yeah, very right? sparse In coral wasteland, land yeah. up to coral garden land, which is way better. Not better. We yeah. didn't come up that far. We're like 600 meters higher, maybe? Is that yeah. true? Yeah. What's this like sweet spot? It feels like three thousand or like twenty nine hundred for corals. Yeah, when we start to like see more. 
Uh, it was during the 8 to 12 watch this morning, okay. I think is where they started to see significant stuff. Um, but, you know, th there were some species we gained and then species that dropped out. Um, we were seeing over the, you know, from 4 o'clock this morning onwards, uh, a few black corals oh. were sampled. Sorry about that. Well, a black coral was sampled. No. Got ambitious. Um, that we hadn't seen at all for the rest of the dive oh. uh, so oh. far. So that was a good crab. Um, as well, I think they sampled the Chrysogorgia colony. Yeah. But the, the sponges, surprisingly, too, those big sponges that we sampled with that, the oxides on it, um, suggest that you know even they are localized. Um, they're clearly not present at this site anymore. They're only dead. Um, but you know the, the, those sponges are not present on the summit. They're just kind of on the fringes of, of the peak when they were alive. Just out of curiosity, Kate, you, do you have a guess at the layback right now? <laughs> we have a lost DVL though, right? You, I mean, you want me to look up a random number generator? <laughs> I mean, you got you have nav. I mean, you're DVL nav and still, right? And then I'm solid. We're right there. <laughs> right there. Okay. That sounds great. Yep. Okay. There's and we watch. are maintaining we are maintaining a knot pretty close, which is awesome. Do you want to jump on uh, SPL for that little update about the distance and time yeah absolutely sorry that i was off spl All good. um i was just giving the herc pilot a little bit of update on where we're going and what we're doing so uh, we have about 830 meters kind of to the edge of this ridge feature that we've been climbing all day and then it drops off so we'll, that's when we'll probably go over ground and reach the other um the other ridge that will ascend to the seamount. And the total distance was four kilometers, and we've gone 0.4 already. So we have 3.6 kilometers to go. Uh, so a couple hours? Come okay. Up just yep. a bit while yeah, it's about two hours. Uh, yeah, totally. Cliff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if we're t and we're traveling at one knot, so should be about spot on, hopefully. Is that the fastest they feel comfortable moving on the bridge? Uh, that's probably the fastest. It's the fast. It's the achievable. <laughs> it's yeah. It's kind of the fastest. Herc can sort of stay ahead before we have to like come up or get into like a tow configuration and then come back down. And I, I could be wrong about this, but that actually, the overhead on that maneuver, puts us kind of right back in the staying out ahead of the of the vehicles right. if that makes sense right it's about the same yeah same it's rate. six and one half dozen of the other mm -hmm. like you go faster in one but you have to do this maneuver well and that's only if the ship can do that and and even because then you're gonna have to pick up speed driving backwards over the cable okay and 
And that's not yeah, ideal. And that's if it could get another, squeeze another half a knot out of it. Okay. So, yeah, if we were going forward, I'd have a little more confidence. Okay. Could you all explain kind of how the ship Argus and Hercules are coordinated right now and how you kind of put all of these three in place for our viewers? Oh, you can. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, can you say it again? <laughs> I was I'll thinking answer, about this, this cliff face. I can, <laughs> I can, I can answer if you uh, want. Yeah, yeah no, like, I, yeah. I can. I've I got can. ROV nav screen up on channel three as well, if you want to use that to kind of show. Oh, perfect. Um, do you have the high pack screen up as well? I, do, I can only do one at a time, so um, let me know which one you want to show. Looks like Argus is clear of the wall there, so. Okay. I won't worry too much then. I'm oh, there it is. Yeah. There's the top. Sorry, we were just uh, in a little bit of a close we're quarters. A, to yeah, the we're having side a moment. The cliff there, so we were concentrating. No worries. Sorry, I asked you. It, it, it <laughs> leave us it's okay. That it happens so fast sometimes yeah. that like you're just like you think you're fine, and then you know there's something to pay attention to that you didn't know was there. And I'm back. Great. <laughs> that sounded like a question that like any one of the front row could answer, uh, and it would come out different. So. <laughs> So Gabby, you can start. We have lots of time, so you could actually. Okay, so do that. can you say the can you say the question again? <laughs> so can you repeat the question? Wondering if you can explain to our viewers how you're coordinating, you know, the ship and Argus and Hercules right now. How did you set them up to do this um, transect kind of through the midwater? Okay, first of all, we lucked upon this like knife edge ridge here, which is super <laughs> awesome. Um, come down here a bit. So. Uh, to coordinate their position. So we have a bunch of ways of telling where all of these pieces are relative to each other. Uh, so we've got these three main p components to the system. We've got the ship, we've got Argus, and we've got Hercules. Um, the way I tell where Hercules is, is by looking at um, the Argus camera, um, which looks right at Hercules. I can see which direction Argus is pointing, and uh, that way I know what direction Herc is relative to Argus. Um, we also have an acoustic system that pings both Argus and Herc from the ship and says which direction both of those are, both vehicles are from the ship, as well as how far they are from the ship. And that also places them in 3D space for us to uh, navigate by. That's called the ultra short baseline. Um, acoustic system. Um, so now um, I'm doing it by acoustics as well as uh, visual information uh, to coordinate Herc's position relative to Argus. Argus tends to stay sort of on the ship's, ship's rear end. Um, it's deployed over the stern uh, and can't really propel itself through the water. It gets sort of towed. In this particular um, evolution, we're moving the ship fast enough that it takes Argus a long time to come up to speed. So it's actually way behind the ship now. I don't know, maybe 200, 300 meters, um, just streaming out, like kiting out the back. Um, and it will catch up as soon as we stop. So our best way to tell where Argus is right now is using that USBL system. Um, how did I do? Kate, you want to talk about the ship and um, where it is and why? Yeah, and so I believe that our navigation screen, or one of our navigation screens, um, the Nav S is up on showing out to the world, correct, Steve? Correct. Um, so you can see some of that USBL positioning that Gabby was just talking about. We have Argus over here in the pink large box, and then Hercules is the smaller yellow little guy right here. Um, and those pings you are seeing are the USBL pings, so those are transmitting uh, the range and bearing and depth, so where we are relative to the ship. Uh, and so our goal right now, and I mentioned this a little bit before, is we're just moving to uh, another ridge and we'll start ascending that, and that's the main part of the seamount. And so we moved the ship and Argus, because they're so closely tied together, um, to make that transit. And yeah, we got the vehicle set up and now here we go. In that display, you can see the direction the ship's facing a bit because the bow is more pointed, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it shows how we're backing up. 
Yeah, exactly. So this gray line that you see, that's showing the ship's movement. And so I'll just, sorry for moving that. We're making a move at bearing 250 and we're tracking that pretty steady. And we're moving about a knot. And these boxes right here are 200 by 200 meters. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of our scale that we're working here. However, do know the vehicles aren't to scale in this. Um, <laughs> Massive. <laughs> huge targets. <laughs> um, so in this example. The or to color. Or to color, that is very true. Well, Herc, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> true. Uh, so right now, the vehicles are about 275 meters from the ship. Um, and so that will probably stay about that distance until we start to settle out. We're moving very comfortably at about 0.7 right now. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's yeah. matching the ship's speed as well. So. Okay. I'm going to show Cam, to come up a Cam Wire. Roger. I see that. So why did you want to keep an eye on Cam Wire? Oh, uh, yeah, we because the ship is backing up, so and the wire is on the stern of the ship. So that's going to pull the wire in towards the back of the ship. So we just want to make sure that we don't really want to rub that cable against the back of the ship. So we just kind of keep an eye on it on Wire Cam. It would have to be pretty extreme for that to happen, uh -huh. but it uh, it has happened. All right, looks like I'm above the Roger. bridge. So when we're not transiting like this, how close is Argus to the ship typically? You said right now it's about 275 meters, I think is what the number you said. So how much closer are we when we kind of slow down and explore? How close do we keep the ROVs? To the uh, ship? Usually 20, 40 meters. Ah, okay. That's a big difference. Yeah. So I zoomed in again. Well, I guess I don't think the nav S screen is up there. It's back up. Oh, perfect. Um, so I changed the scale. So each um, box is 20 by 20 meters. So you can think about if we were on the ground moving, the ship would be more kind of. I'll use this red line to indicate. We're still in this area of like awesome diversity. Uh, closer to. Really the vehicles cool. or the vehicles would be closer to the ship. This ridge is just a long, thin knife's edge. Yeah, it's super awesome. That's the one I set up about an hour ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you did so good. I'm so stoked. I'm going to leap off this cliff here a little bit. Heading down, Josh, if you've got the room. Oops, sorry. How are we relative to that steep section, Nav? 630 meters away. Great. So someone asked about some leafy debris that we probably saw a minute or two ago. My guess is what you saw um, is a sponge, a dead sponge that's kind of fallen over We've seen a few of those, well, a lot of those throughout this dive. Um, they almost look like tree stalks, but I'm guessing that's what you saw. Yep. S something very similar has been imaged live in the area. Um, we saw a few live on the last expedition, but the site seems to be completely dead uh, when it comes to those sponges. Um, something about the environment's just not favorable for them.
I love the Doppler. I'm liking the 600 as well. Yeah. All right, I've got an Argus question for you. Does Argus have yaw control? Yeah, it sure does. We can yaw. We can even lateral a little bit for a little ways. We don't often do that, but uh, yeah, so it uh, has two thrusters, one on either end, so we can control its heading. Uh, but you can run them in that way where you can lateral or, or yaw. And oftentimes we just run in an auto heading mode, so I oftentimes, like in this particular case, we know the ship's bearing, and I'll put the Argus heading on that bearing, and then we'll kind of, as we move, we'll drag Argus through the water on that uh, on that heading, which matches the bearing of the ship. <clears throat> and then verticals, I use a winch. So we have a traction winch on the ship uh, with 7,000 meters of uh, cable on it, which is what sends the power and communications down from the ship to Argus and then through to Hercules. Uh, and that's why I have the vertical control. I winch in and out on the big winch, and, uh, and that's how I keep our relative uh, distance, our vertical distance apart the way we want it. When I first read this question, I read it as, does Argus have yeehaw control? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has yeehaw control. The ship usually, the ship swell creates the yeehaw yeah. part. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> and then I had to ask Steve what yaw control was. Kelly, I really appreciate your honesty on that one. <laughs> it's been a little journey with that question. <laughs> I've had a fair amount of yeehaw in this last uh, Yeah, we day. really have. Yeah. Uh, Gabby, I'm gonna update my answer. It looks like we'll fall off the cliff in about 250 meters. Roger that. Tell me when I should springboard and I'll do it. <laughs> do I need to know what springboard means? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna jump. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like going into a pool, a really big pool. The off deepest of, sand. <laughs> off a really, really, really big. Before you jump off, can you drop a target? Uh, Okay. Where we leave the bottom? Yes. Sounds great. Because this has been a really nice transect. Yes. So. Good. I can actually make some targets along the... Yeah, there's been a lot of coral in the last yeah. 20 minutes or We so. have the super clear water to thank for this. Because I'm like, like four meters up oh, um, wow. in the back of the vehicle, which means I'm quite a bit more in the front and still able to see things. And also Kate spending a while lining up this shot so that we got right down the right down the ridge. It worked super good. Way to go, Kate. <laughs> Thank you. It's because Aaron brought me tea. I woke up. Oh, <laughs> nice one. Thank you, Aaron. You don't have some secret bathy resolution grid back there? No, that nobody no. else has. No, but this, I'm just going to share this. This reminds me of a funny story. My mother thinks I have secret access to NOAA weather reports. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Mom, if you're listening. I'm just throwing you under the bus. Um, and she lives in on Kauai, so in the Hawaiian Islands. So whenever there's a major storm or a hurricane coming around, she doesn't believe in the weather reports or what NOAA puts out. She has to call me or text me and have me walk her through the weather report. But really, I'm just reading the same one that's printed for anybody to see. Oh Quite comical. Gosh. I love that so much. I will definitely be texting you <laughs> yeah, <me laughs> whenever I wonder what's happening to Vancouver Island. Yeah, We've got like a massive storm coming. It's like all red on windy. Kate, pull out your confidential weather data. <laughs> <laughs> Help us out. I want to know the exact speed, oh, yeah. the time it's going to hit me. I did walk her through how to use Windy one time. Okay. Oh, I'm going to come to you later and be like, I, t I need a tutorial. 
Uh -huh. Just do it in front of Rainy and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Is he going to try to help me? Yeah, Rainy's really great with Wendy. There is a subset of like people on the ship who literally always have wind. I think it might be windy open and are just like refreshing it on their phones. <clears throat> Josh. <laughs> Some of us like to the weather. It's interesting. <laughs> so you don't need to pay for the app, right? Or nope. The app is free, but then there's a premium version which gives you a little more detail and a more uh, updates. The premium is. Thirty dollars a year. Is it worth it? Yeah. What do you? Well, we don't need to do a commercial for Wendy. I was gonna say it's like a bunch of Wendy influencers. <laughs> but there's app. loads of apps. I mean, Wendy's Wendy's one. We I think I mean there's lots that are just as good as Wendy. Wendy looks kind of pretty. So yeah, got Wendy good. is that matters. Or like really scary if you're yeah, watching visuals. like a bomb cyclone hit your island in the middle of winter. Yeah, it looks a little scary. Yeah. yeah. There's like passages weather. There's no weather. There's other apps. Uh, Wind alert I use a lot, which actually is pretty cool because it gives you, well, not out here, but any if you're more inshore where there is weather, buoys or stations or lighthouses, it just yeah. gives you a map of all the actual recordings of what's going on. So yeah, the cool. the wind sports apps are yeah. really good. Um, big Wave Dave, <laughs> big uh, big <laughs> yeah. proponent of Big Wave Dave. I'm a huge fan <laughs> myself. He's awesome. Love so there's big there's wave loads Dave. of weather apps and things out there, but uh, Wendy's pretty cool. Does Wendy have the option for seeing where lightning strikes are? I've seen that in one app before, but I'm not sure which one it was. Where in strikes? Lightning strikes. Oh, lightning strikes. Um, I don't see that on Wendy. It shows like where they've happened? Or what, what do you mean by that, Steve? Yeah, it just shows, yeah, basically uh, a cool. location of recent lightning strikes during a storm. Huh. But I think that was a different... Yeah. And sometimes if you're really remote, you can uh, pay to for weather service. So you can have uh, groups send you weather for exactly where your ship is. You know, if you're out mm -hmm. in a remote area or you want to, you're doing work that requires, you know, knowing exactly what the weather is going to do, like right in your location. If you're like laying cables, for example, or you're doing precise work or you want to know exactly what's going on, then you pay for weather services. They'll send you reports a few times a day. And they're awesome. They're usually just spot on for exactly where you are. You get those for the Southern Ocean and the Pacific and... Yeah, we do those when we do cable lays for ONC. We usually get Oh, them really? Because the cable ship will have the weather service and then okay. they send it over to us. So. Yeah, Is it like getting a weather forecast for a town, except you're out in the middle of the Except ocean? it's yeah, like a black like a, dot in the middle of yeah, nowhere. Exactly yeah. where your yeah. coordinate is. That's cool. like, that's what the weather is. Is this our right spot, there. Kate? I think we're getting very, fairly close. Okay. Very, very close. This may be the spot just because it's a little steep here. I'm not sure. We'll see if I reacquire the bottom, but I'm not I sure. believe it. Yeah. You want to point, point to me where we are? I just can't see the you're black. You're right here. Oh, yeah. Right oh, here. Yeah. I yeah. think we're done here. Jump. Jump. I'm Jump. jumping. OK. Auto depth. Also, if we go down too far, then we end up up having to go up that amount, too. So auto, auto alt is not what I want. I want auto depth. We want to aim around yeah, 2,700 or no, no deeper than about 2,700 meters. We're at 2,750 right now. 2,730 Argus is that. So. Perfect, then. All right. All right, we've gone a little. one kilometer, three more to go. Oh, rats. What, what's your plan here? Do you want to stay? Do you want me to come down a little bit more? Uh, I'm trying to come up a bit. Okay. Uh, <coughs> now you're pulling me around a little bit. Yeah. Don't have my auto depth on. Okay, that's better. Okay, there's that. Okay, that should be more comfortable.
think the last time I was out here was that 2018, I think. We were just like, just like one hurricane. We were in like the hurricane pipeline, like one, oh, one after, after, another, another, after yeah. another, after another, after another. It was crazy. What time of year was that? Oh, I can't remember. I think it might have been fall, I want to say. I can still see the bottom. Yeah. It's pretty far away, but I can still see it. It's pretty wild. I was on Oahu for a wedding and had to flee because <laughs> of the hurricane. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. We didn't really have a We didn't really have a good place to stay. Data, can you make a note that I stopped the still camera for uh, the duration of the tow? Yeah, actually, on the first hurricane when we arrived here, uh, they wanted all the ships to leave port. And we were in port at that time. And the decision was made to leave us behind. They thought it would be safer for us to be in a hotel in Waikiki. I've, <laughs> so, heard, I've heard stories about that. So we were in Waikiki <laughs> for like four nights, four or five days, something like that. Well, the ship was off, and it wasn't that bad. There was one night that was a little windy. Uh, Sounds rough. But it was, was alright. The, the funny part was is that on the I think it was the first night, or it was the first windy night where everyone was supposed to just stay inside and hunker down. We weren't allowed to go out anywhere. Uh, the Red Cross was came just to be there just in case. And there was somebody from the Red Cross staying in our hotel. And they left a, uh, we had like little kitchenettes in the room. And they decided to leave like a shaving can or some sort of pressurized can of whatever on the stove after it was hot oh god and it blew up and it blew the window out of the hotel which was above our room oh and i remember waking up at like five in the morning to shattering glass falling on our porch and i thought oh man this is like this is happening <laughs> <laughs> so then the fire alarm goes off we all had to evacuate the hotel so we're all out on the street <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Waikiki, like <laughs> wondering what's going on. The fire department shows up and all this stuff is happening. And then it was nothing to do with the hurricane. It was like the Red Cross coming to help. <laughs> so thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was like our first night. It was awesome. And then I heard you guys went to IHOP. Is that right? Uh, Well, yeah. We... I definitely heard about the IHOP trip as well. I have that a great. Apparently, I should it was find legendary it. because, like, I've, I've heard about it multiple times. <laughs> I have a great picture of Justin on the street during that. <laughs> <laughs> With a big smile, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I think it was 2018. Was it 2018? I mean, it was pretty crazy even just a week ago. Not hurricane status, but in Honolulu. Like yeah, I'd say it was actually windier that day than it was during the hurricane time. Still yeah, I wasn't, emergency. I wasn't expecting to land in Honolulu and get emergency flood alerts. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> serious. Yeah. How's that morning? It's like fun. <laughs> that was later that there was later that day we're having <laughs> tiramisu and a mai tai. That was his lunch. Yeah, so I guess that was August, August of uh, 2018. I do believe that was the hurricane. My mother was asking me for secret weather reports. Yeah. <laughs> Just to loop it back. <laughs> well, then that one, that one ended. So then we go back to the ship and then we go to try and do some work. And we had, we were working just off of the big island, I think. 
and uh, and then just like then another hurricane comes in. Then we had to run away from that one for a while, and then we went and hid in like uh, the bays near the island. I can't remember. Um, and then went out to do more work. Then another hurricane comes in. We had to run away from that one. And then it was like it was just like one after another after another. It's crazy. So why don't they want the ships to stay in port? That seems like it'd be a safe place, but they just bang into each other or something? Yeah, I guess if you get, if they start, if it comes a real hurricane and they start ripping the port apart and then oh, it yeah. could come like a real problem. So they just basically, the safest place for the ships is just to scatter, get out uh, away from the beach and away from the hurricane. Right. So they just send all the ships off. The port was essentially closed. They weren't accepting anybody coming in or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> Look at our our spread here is getting pretty serious. If you yeah. can find those like big, uh, I don't. So did he refill that? There's like those big peanut butter caramel chocolate things yeah. in there. Yeah. They're at the bottom. You gotta really like. Now you're talking the end of trying. Yeah, one. shake it up. If you guys <laughs> could eat out the other ones. I noticed that the the coconut macadamia. Went they fast. sort. They sort to the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's that's the way of uh, sedimentation and yeah, sorting. Right. Yep. Any, any good geologist worth their salt will tell you that the chocolate macadamia clusters are <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> they're, so, they're so good, though. They really they're are. They're worth so good. Uh, or dense, right? Now, obviously. Yep. <laughs> I my lid. So the bigger things go to the bottom. Is that true, though? Sounds wrong to me. Well, my neighbor was trying to tell me how to build a fire pit. And he's like, put the, the big stones down first. And I was, I was confused why. On the bit. Anyway. I'm pretty sure you can't burn stones, but. Not to burn them. <laughs> <laughs> to be the base of the fire pit. <laughs> Steve. I'm kidding. Steve. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Steve. <laughs> Tell that to the center of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Right back at you. <laughs> Would it be too bad of a joke to say it's all downhill from here? <laughs> Every part of the way you said that sounded like Rennie. <laughs> I think we have very similar senses of humor. You have similar voices too. I'm I've sort of been looking for cases of convergent evolution for long timers <laughs> on the ship. <laughs> Stephen Rennie. Stephen Rennie. Convergently evolved. I love it. <laughs> I'm nothing if not a, an observer. <laughs> this is about science here. Well, I was listening to the 8 to 12 watch, and apparently I made an impression because now they all know their corals, and oh yeah, they kicked me out of their watch last cruise. Yeah, so. I've heard I've heard that Rennie's quite good with his coral IDs. Yeah, the entire 8 to 12 group is spot on. Oh, that's excellent. <laughs> I keep looking over at that sponge rubble sticking out of the starboard bio box. <laughs> 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 it's like in the Galapagos when they sampled that tube worm it was sticking out of the box on the way out, all the way up. So the Galapagos was that trip. I wasn't on those trips, but I keep hearing about how many samples you guys were getting on them, like just samples upon samples upon samples. Yeah, that was that was Rennie. He uh, he saved saved us, I think. Um, but it might have destroyed him in the same time because <laughs> uh, it was a lot of samples. And it, was, it wasn't a lot of samples necessarily, it was a lot of sample partitioning, so a lot of subsamples of samples. Okay. Right, yeah. I remember hearing like, oh, the associates over and over. Oh, yeah. Mm. 
What year was that? Was that 2016? 15. It must have been 15 because I wasn't oh. out for it, or I, I wasn't on there. I got yet. a great photo of uh, that two berm getting pulled out of its. Uh, oh wow! Really? Wow! Like one of the big ones? Yeah, I I sampled the, the giant one. No kidding. Yeah. Like how? I actually didn't put it in a box. The really okay. big one, I did it right at the very end of the dive, collected mm -hmm. it, and then kind of swirled it up in the arm and held it on the like porch. Like spaghetti? Yeah. Kind of spun it up and then I held it down on the porch. Spaghetti. <laughs> anyway, you'll be happy to know that per the requirements of our permit, all of the Galapagos specimens are now back in the Galapagos. Oh, that's Sweet. awesome. Oh, no way. Well, they're in Ecuador. I don't know if they're in the Galapagos yet. That's really neat. They're on their way, though. I shipped them so back. you place them back in a, as close to possible as possible, or what's the... No, they um, they issued the permits such that when the specimens were identified, that they had to be sent back to um, the Galapagos for scientists to work on them. Mm, I see. Further. I guess I should do my... That's cool. Cages, almost and is, was Beth, like, returning rocks to... Papahanamu Kuakea. Is that true? Um, I think that's her intention. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, they're trying to get it. I don't know that it actually came out of there. It wasn't mostly. It was mostly not alive. Oh my gosh. Wow. How long do you think that is? That tube worm? Oh, it was at least, it had to be at least eight to 10 feet tall. It was. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Bob mentioned a 13 foot tube worm last night. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe that was wow. it. Yeah. We put it in a, in a big, long, well, you know, a tube thing. There's a different shot. It's kind of. Over a Josh is showing photos on his phone of <laughs> giant tube.